Hi, and welcome back to Terry Talks Movies. This time around, I've got a whole bunch of stuff given to me by Umbrella Entertainment, the latest releases. There's some really cool stuff here. Some of it is region locked to region B. Some of it is all region, which is really exciting. And while I do this, uh, shout out to my friends in New Zealand. I'm drinking L&P, which is the iconic New Zealand soft drink. I found it in a gas station. And that's what I'm drinking today, unless I decide to get a coffee. This first one is regional to Australia, but it's a neo western. It's a Brat Pack western. A lot of people love it from the I think the late 1980s, early 1990s. Young Guns came out in an Australian Blu-ray release for the first time, and for a lot of people that's very exciting. Not for me particularly, but I know that middle-aged geek girl loves this movie. Of course, it has uh, Emilio Estevez, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond Phillips. Charlie Sheen, Derbert Mulroney, and Casey Simasco. Yeah, it's one of those kind of neo-westerns that were coming out at the time when westerns weren't particularly popular. There's a lot of extras in here. There's a, a documentary on the real Billy the Kid. There's a feature-length audio commentary with Lou Diamond Phillips, Derbert Mulroney, and Casey Simasco. And there's the making of Young Guns featurette. So that one for a lot of people is going to be more exciting than it is for me but still I like having a range of westerns in my collection because I collect a number of them and I like to compare and contrast westerns. For me that, that's one of the things I really enjoy doing with movies is taking a look at different genres in different decades and comparing and contrasting. I'm going to be re-watching that one because I haven't watched it since VHS days and I may look more kindly upon it in the 20 first century the next one's really exciting uh it's a steven soderbergh movie one of steven soderbergh's best movies it's all region and it's about a ex-con called wilson played by terence stamp who travels to los angeles searching for the uh, searching for the information about the death of his daughter of course it's the limey now this one is hardcore solid crime drama and Terence Stamp was pretty much a career best when he made this one. So you're English. Yeah, that's right. Let's see who else is in there. Um his daughter's played by Melissa George, an Australian actress. You've got Peter Fonda, you got Barry Newman, you got Louise Gusman, you've got Leslie Ann Warren. Um, really, I haven't watched this one for a long time and I want to re-watch it. Again, it's another one I haven't watched since VHS days. But I remember really loving this and loving the kind of embedded toughness that Terence Stamp brings to the role. Uh, a toughness that you see even more recently in movies like Last Night in Soho. Terence Stamp played a really hardcore character who would almost be like a more recent version of this guy, except he's not because of the plot in that movie. But this one's got a lot of stuff. It's got an audio commentary with Steven Soderbergh and writer Lem Dobbs. Audio commentary with Terence Stamp, Peter Fonda, Leslie Ann Warren, Barry Newman, Joe D'Alessandro, who's also in the movie, uh, Steven Soderbergh and Lem Dobbs. An isolated movie score, interviews with the cast and crew, B-roll, 20th anniversary Q&A with Soderbergh. Leslie Ann Warren and Louise Gussman, editor Sarah Flack and the cinematographer Ed Luckman. Welcome to Violence, the Evolution of the British Gangster on Screen, a video essay by Andrew Nettie. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck there. It's definitely all region because it's got that little triangle of region um, information there. Yeah, this one I'm really looking forward to watching. Uh, I'm in the mood for some crime drama at the moment. I've been watching a few lighter things. And I think the limey may be where I start. I'll probably watch that over the weekend and really enjoy it. Uh, Peter Fonda, I actually met once, so I've got one degree of separation from this movie. Uh, this is actually with a slip cover on. I'll take the slip cover off because that's the polite thing to do. Let's have a look at the cover art underneath. Very kind of minimalist, really interesting cover art there. I like that. That is, it's not going to sell the movie to somebody who's walking past the shelves to look at it, but I like that. It's, it's beautifully gritty, that one. So, yeah, uh, that's a, a really nice catch by Umbrella. I think they put a lot of effort into it, given all the extras that are in it. And anybody 
can have access to it and have all of those extras as well. And of course, Umbrella have been putting out their Ozploitation classics. And this one, we've got a double feature of Night of Fear and In of the Damned. And the cover slipping off, so I might as well show you. There's the Night of Fear side of it. There's the end of the dam side of it. And before I get into the movie itself, this version of it also comes with a day bill of In of the Damned. Done in the style of the original day bills. I know they went to that kind of two-tone colour late in the history of movie day bills. So that one is really great fun. Uh, the movies themselves, let's have a look at the movies themselves. You know, The Damned is one of those Australian movies in the 80s that got imported actors to do a lot of the work on them. Um, in a lonely stretch of road, deep in the isolated rainforest lies an eerie forgotten inn. Few travellers stop there now and those that do disappear. And we've got Alex Cord in that one playing an American bounty hunter who is hired to unravel the inn's chilling secrets. Who is hired to unravel the inn's chilling secrets uh there's got demented owners judith anderson and just joseph firth judith anderson the australian actress um she worked in america for a long time she was in rebecca amongst other things she was also in star trek to the search for spock and uh she really fine actress joseph first is a european actor who went to england and did some films in England, then came to Australia and did TV series mostly. But he has a fine pedigree as an actor. Really interesting. Into the Damned, I think I like less than I like Night of Fear, which is about a young woman who meets a reclusive hermit who is insane, played by Norman Yem. Norman Yem was a famous Australian television actor who did a lot of the Crawford Police TV series in the time. Um, but he plays a maniac really well. Interesting actor. And Carla Hoogieven's a, a really fine actress as well. And this one's a lot more closer to one of the movies I've got in this third lot of movies that I'm going to show you. It's got a little bit of Texas Chainsaw about it, in a way. Now, the disc has a whole bunch of features. Um, the D.W. Griffiths of Exploitation, a video essay about the career of filmmaker Terry Burke by film buff Paul Harris. So Paul Harris knows his stuff too. Uh, an extended Not Quite Hollywood interviews with the producer and editor Rod Hay and cast members Carla Hoogieven, Norman Yem and Bryony e. Bates. We've got a Night of Fear 2005 Ordinary O commentary with producer and editor Rod Hay and actress Carla Hoogieven, moderated by Mark Hartley, who did Not Quite Hollywood. End of the Damn 2005 audio commentary with Rod Hay and actor Tony Bonner. Terry Burke TV episode of The Raiders with introduction by Jack Thompson. So this is actually an Australian 1960s, 1970s TV episode on here as a bit of a random extra. And uh, there's a Terry Burke trailer reel introduced by Terry Burke. Stills and poster gallery and theatrical trailer. You're never going to get a more complete package of these particular films, giving a lot more context to the lesser-known exploitation movies. Everybody knows Mad Maxes and Stones and, and Alvin Purples and all of those ones, but these lesser-known ones were important in the industry as well because they're kind of the driving movies of exploitation much more than a lot of the other films were there were some high class australian films being produced and shown in the, in the class cinemas when you got down to the suburban cinemas where i lurked these were the kind of movies that you saw in them and you saw them at the drive-ins as well because people went to the drive-ins to either see two things back in the 70s here in australia softcore pornography or else they went to see horror and exploitation films. And these two films are at the core of that. And it's good to see them getting a bit of respect and getting a Blu-ray release. And thank you to Umbrella for doing that. Um, you, you're saving our cultural heritage. That brings me to this particular package, which is pretty wonderful. They're movies that everybody knows in the horror genre, but they're packaged up really nicely. I'll show the spines of them first because I like the way this is done. It's under a new brand that they're doing called Ausploitation Variant. There are the three movies, Hellraiser, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and George Romero's Day of the Dead. Now, these are really nicely packaged. Here are the covers individually.
So they've got some nice variant covers on there. The inside ones are a little more prosaic. They're, they're your standard covers for these films. And by the way, there's the back of the Day of the Dead cover with Bud the Chud there. Now, Day of the Dead, we like Of course, it's uh, the sequel to Night of the Living Dead. Uh, this one's got two Blu-rays. And we've got audio commentaries by Romero and Tom Savini, Cletus Anderson and L Laurie Cardiel. Audio commentary with Greg Nicotero, um, Howard Berger, Everett Burrett and Mike Dick. World's End, The Legacy of Day of the Dead. Behind the Scenes with Tom Savini. Interviews with um, George A. Romero in 2008. Trailers, TV spots, Gateway Commerce Centre promo video, which is the place where they filmed it. Uh, bonus DVD... The Many Days of the Dead, Joe of the Dead, Reflections of the Living Dead, Travelogue of the Dead, and Image Gallery. So there's a lot of stuff on here. And it's a really nicely packaged one for people in Australia. There we got Hellraiser, based on the Clive Barker story. There's the inside cover of it. Now this one we've got some special features. Audio commentary with Clive Barker and Ashley Lawrence, the star of the movie. Hellraiser Resurrection feature it. Under the Skin, Doug Bradley on Hellraiser, on set with Clive Barker. Some extras are 25 feet per second and may not play on a region A player. This one, this one's actually multi-region. So I'm a bit surprised at that. One of these is not multi-region, but Hellraiser is. So if you want this version of Hellraiser, get the whole package and buy yourself a region-free Blu-ray player. So that was a, a little bit surprising. Um, I haven't seen the new Hellraiser miniseries yet. I hear good things about it, but I haven't seen it. But I have seen this one, and when I first saw it back in the day, it scared the hell out of me. It was very, very, very confronting. A lot of claret goes past people in this one. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the classic, which was banned in Australia for a long time. Now we've got Blu-ray releases of it, which shows that censorship always sucked. And on the back, it's got a quote, that's the last goddamn hitchhiker I ever pick up. Inside, we've got a nice cover with a dead armadillo on it. And the back, this one is Region B. Lots and lots of special features. In fact, too many of them to read out but um yeah i had never had a copy of texas chainsaw massacre i've seen it on uh, vhs and dvd but having it on blu-ray fills out my horror collection which is becoming more and more extensive and i really like what umbrella have done with that but not only that there's more you get a set of steak knives no you don't what you do get is day bill sized posters for each of these movies they're not day bills per se, but they're day bill sized. There's the one for Day of the Dead. Here's the Hellraiser one. Sorry, I can't show you full length, but uh, they are pretty damn good. And here is the iconic one for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I like what Umbrella's done with those three as well. For people who are getting into physical media particularly and who haven't got some of these classic films, particularly the horror ones, the Hellraiser, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Day of the Dead, they're a great way to pick up your collection because I know there are a number of younger people who are just now getting into physical media and didn't have the opportunity to buy a lot of stuff like this stuff back in the day and they're getting into it now and are really embracing the extras that you get in physical media. In fact, today I saw two different posts on one on Twitter and one on Facebook with people lamenting having a movie on streaming services for the simple reason that they don't get the extras and don't get the context and have to go somewhere else to get that. They either have to look at a YouTube video, which I don't mind at all, or else they have to go and find a reference book or a Wikipedia page or something like that. Having all your info in one little disc is really great um it, it's useful to people it lets them um investigate further if they particularly like a movie that they watch and it gives them context and it lets them hear the voices of the creators as much as it lets them hear the product of the creators and i really like that a lot it's um it's wonderful that we live in a time where we have this kind of technology 
and it would be a, a cultural shame across the world if we ever lost it. So that's it for this time around. I am doing an 80th anniversary retrospective on Casablanca in the next video, which I've already started working on, and I really enjoyed re-watching that one. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Tell me which one of these you really like and which ones you think are maybe the ones that you would buy if you had the opportunity um, I always encourage people to buy physical media and buy a player that will carry it. Oddly enough, the, the good ones are increasing in value, so it's an investment as much as anything else. By the way, you can also support the channel financially by donating at patreon.com slash paleocinema. I'm doing a couple of extras for people. When you get, see, get this video, you'll have one day to join the Patreon. To be in the draw to win the imprint version of the world of Susie Wong, which I am giving away to one lucky Patreon supporter. And I'm also doing a reading of, of Die Hard Christmas, the little children's book version of Die Hard, which is only going to be seen by the Patreon supporters around the 23rd or 24th of December. So on that note, look after yourselves. Watch good movies, watch bad movies. Pick up some movies that you really enjoyed in the past. And Ozploitation as well, because Ozploitation, for many people, is the undiscovered country. And I like the fact that people are slowly, but surely, in other countries, discovering the cultural output of my nation. So anyway, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you next time.